Hello, Monroe School District parents and students. This is Deanne Hermes from Digital Learning, and today I want to talk to you about using the Zoom tool that your teacher will probably be sending out for you to join a virtual um, classroom meeting with them over a tool called Zoom. Zoom is a tool which allows people to use video and audio conferencing to come together into one place. So this is the tool that we're going to be using in the Monroe School District, and I want to share with you today how to use it. To begin with, let's talk about the Chromebooks. So you have a Chromebook and you haven't used it at home yet. So let's talk about what that means. When you open up your Chromebook on your home screen, you will potentially see some tiles. You might see your name in here. You might not. If you do see your name in here, then all you'll need to do is type in your school email password and you will type that in and then you can log into your Chromebook. If you don't see your name here, on the bottom left of your screen, you're gonna see this add a person. Click on that add a person, it will ask you for your school email address as well as your school email password. Type that in and then that will log you into your Chromebook. Parents, if, you, if your student has forgotten their password or their email address, you can go into, into um, Family Access in Skyward and you will be able to locate the, their email address as well as their password. So that has been made available to you again through Family Access. Okay, so that's how you would use a Chromebook initially when you're logging into that. If you are using a personal device at home or something that is not a school Chromebook. To start off with, with anything we talk about today and anytime you do anything that has to do with your school account, it will be really important that when you log into Google or log into a Chrome browser, that you make sure that you are logged in with your school account. So if you click on, if you click on the icon with either your picture or your name at the top, you will be able to see which account is logged in. This is my student um, Monroe account, and so I'm logged in with that. If I was logged into a personal account, I would want to sign out, and then I would want to re-log in and make sure I'm logged in um, again with my school account. That's really important. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways that you will be able to access these virtual Zoom meetings that, that um, may be put forth by your teacher. The first one is it's possible that your teacher will send you to your school email account an invite to join a Zoom meeting. When you click on that, the invite is going to give you some information about the meeting. So it will tell you the time and the date. It will give you a link to how you can access that Zoom meeting. And depending how your teacher sends this forward, it may also come with some information about how you can join this meeting with a telephone. So if you don't have Wi-Fi access, this would be the way for you to join that meeting. If this part doesn't come in your email and you need to join with a phone, please contact your teacher and they can pass this information along to you. So that's the first way that you could potentially be notified whether you're going to have a Zoom meeting with your, with your teacher or not. The second way is through Canvas. And Canvas is a learning management system that we're implementing in our district. So different teachers in different schools may be in different places with this implementation. So maybe not everybody is there yet, but you can expect over the next several weeks that more and more of the Zoom meetings will be housed within Canvas. So what is Canvas? Um, we'll get into that more a little bit later, but that's a place where um, your child's school content is going to be housed and where they can access that. Let me show you how to get there. So on any device, if you go out to our district website and along the, the black toolbar at the top, if you scroll over to students, the third one down, you're going to see Canvas. You want to click on that. Once you have been logged in to the device you're using, using your school account, Canvas automatically will sync you into your account through them. And so again, 
if this isn't working right, go back and make sure that you are signed into Chrome with your school Google account and not a personal account. So this is what our Canvas dashboard is going to look like. And it may look different for different students depending how many classes that you're enrolled in. This is what we call the dashboard. And you will get more information on this a little bit later. But I do want to draw your attention to what we call the global navigation bar, and that's on the left hand side. And as you look down, you're going to see several options. The one I want to draw your attention to is the calendar. If you click on the calendar, this is going to open up for you an agenda for the things that have been scheduled within Canvas. And this is where you will find your Zoom meetings. Now, before I show you how to do that, I would strongly suggest that you change your view to a weekly view. Um, if you're in a monthly view, this is going to get filled up pretty quick because this is where it will house your assignments and your Zoom meetings, etc. But if you go to a weekly view, notice it changes it. So now you also have not only a daily view, but you also have an hourly view per day. So as you're looking through this, you can scroll and you can see what your day looks like and what your week looks like all in a glance. So a super helpful tool when you're trying to figure out when you're supposed to be where. Now this week, I don't have anything scheduled, but let's take a look at next week. So I'm going to head up top and you will see here's some arrows that can toggle between the weeks. I'm going to scroll to the right and this is next week. Now under next week, I see that I do have an event listed. If I come over here and click on that event, it brings me up some information. And notice that this is for a Zoom online meeting. This And it will tell me which class that this is for. So it's for this class, and here's the date and the time, and this is how I join it. So I would go ahead, if it was, if it was this date and this time, I would click on this, and it's going to help me to join that Zoom meeting. Now, it's not happening right now, so we wouldn't be able to join. But for each of these Zoom meetings that get scheduled, no matter what class it's in, they will all appear on your big calendar. And so when it's time to join that class, again, find it on the calendar, click on it, and you can enter that Zoom meeting. So I'll show you what that looks like here in just a moment. So again, when, you're, when you go out to, to Canvas, as soon as you log in from the district website, you log in, come over and find your calendar, click on your calendar, change it to a weekly view, and then you will be able to see what's on the agenda for that week. Okay, so um, for, some, for some teachers, some buildings, we're still working on getting Canvas up and running. And so you may be invited to, to Zoom meetings via email for a little while. Let's talk about what that will look like. And this is the same process that will happen when you try and join um, from Canvas as well. So if you get a link in your email, you're going to go ahead and click on that link. And that is going to take you out to Zoom. Now, I have, I apologize for some bad pictures, but um, I had to do a couple of roundabout ways because of the way that Zoom interacts with accounts. So I had to take pictures from a Chromebook. Um, so let's, let me show you what's going to happen then as you enter. So as soon as you click on that link, you're going to have two options. One is to join a meeting and the other is to sign in. Please make sure you're on join a meeting. This is really important. You need to start here. So you're in join a meeting. Here's the meeting code. And then you have a box for your screen name. You need to enter your first and your last name here. Please do not put nicknames. Please do not put silly names. This needs to be your first and your last name because your teacher is only going to admit you into the meeting if they recognize your first and your last name. There's two other options here about connecting with audio and video. Make sure that you are, so you shouldn't check these boxes because you want to be able to enter with audio and video. And then you're gonna go ahead and click the button of join. Once that happens, it will bring up a, a image of you, and this is a video preview, so it's checking to make sure your camera is working on your device. And so you're gonna go ahead and see that. 
It's going to give you a box, always show video preview. It's a good idea just to make sure. And then um, the, bo the buttons at the bottom, I'm sorry, one of them's kind of covered, but this says join with audio and or join with video and join without video. Please make sure you join with video. Your teacher needs to see your face and that way they know that it's you who's joining the meeting. So you want to join with video. Once you hit that join with video button, it's going to connect you. This may take a minute or two, depending on how busy things are and how busy your Wi-Fi is. And then once you get connected to that meeting, this is going to pop up. If you see this box, you have been connected to the meeting. Um, it may take a couple of minutes for you right here because this is, this is what has happened is that now you have joined a waiting room. And on the other side, your teacher is admitting you into the class as soon as they see that it's you. So it may take a minute or two, depending how many people are popping in at one time. So um, as soon as your teacher admits you, then this screen will disappear and you will have a screen that will pop up like this. And you will see, um, you'll see some video behind and it will ask you then about joining your audio. If you do not have computer audio, you can join by phone. That means you're going to have to watch the, the video on the screen and you will have to dial a phone number up and, and join the meeting by phone that way for the audio. If you have audio in your computer, all the Chromebooks do, I strongly suggest that you join by audio on the computer. So you're going to go ahead and click that. As soon as you do, then it's going to pop up a box for you. Now, I want you to take a peek as soon as this pops up in the bottom left hand corner. This is where it's going to tell you whether you're muted or not. Most meetings are going to start with you automatically muted. The reason for that is because if we have too many people who have their microphone turned on, we start to get a lot of echoing and static happening. And so it, it's really um, to make the meeting go well and to have the audio good for everybody. It's really important that unless you're talking, that you have this turned off. So you want to make sure that you are muted. When you're muted, you're going to see this red line through the microphone. And that just that just says you're muted. Make sure you're there unless your teacher asks you to unmute yourself. In which case, to be unmuted, you'll go ahead and click on this little microphone and that will unmute you. There are some other options. Um, where your teacher is the, is going to put in um, a setting which requires them to unmute you. If that's the case, you won't be able to unmute yourself. You will see this box pop up here, unmute me, and you can click on that and that will notify your teacher that you have something to say and that you would like to, to be unmuted. Um, there's also another um, option up here in the top right hand side and this is to raise your hand. Um, I will show you a little bit more about that in just a second. Across the top, you will notice that here's a picture of the person who's talking. Your teacher generally is the one that automatically pops in. And across the top, you're going to see other participants in this meeting. You can keep it in this view or you can click on gallery view and that will pop up little tiles on the whole screen of other people who are involved in this meeting. So you can fiddle around with these features a little bit just to see who's in. Um, and it might take you a couple screens worth depending how many people are part of this meeting. Okay, the raise hand. So when you have 30 plus students in a class and you, it's just like in a classroom, if you want to say something, you're gonna wanna raise your hand because you want people to hear you and only you. This button allows that same feature within Zoom. So if you have something to say, you want to click this and that will notify your teacher that you have a comment that you would like to say something. So that's again going to be found in the top right hand corner of your screen. Finally, when it is um, when it's time to end the meeting, your teacher may just end the meeting, which means you will be automatically kicked off. If you are ready to just leave the meeting, you can go ahead and click on this little red button in the bottom right, leave meeting and is going to pop up, are you sure you want to? And then if you click on the little blue, then that's gonna take you out of that meeting. So there's some other features in Zoom that is some settings and things that you can play around with, but in general, that is how you would go about getting, um, entering into a Zoom meeting and what it feels like once you're in that meeting. 
Again, um, you will either receive an email invitation to a Zoom meeting, or if your teacher is using Canvas, then you will join your Zoom meetings through Canvas by going to the calendar link. So I hope that that helps you have a better understanding of how to use the Zoom tool and how to join meetings in the different ways that you will get invited. Thank you so much for your time.